Hey friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and I am a disabled neurodivergent content creator. I have autism, ADHD, a rare memory disorder called SDAM, and global aphantasia, which means that I don't experience any of the senses in my mind. And I have a playlist on all of these topics, so make sure you check them out. So a lot of this channel is a personal vlog about when I started to suspect that I might have autism, which actually started pretty early on in this channel. Um, I started it, I thought I was going to be talking mostly about aphantasia and SDAM. And probably, I'd have to look at the videos, but probably like a month in, if that, um, I was working on getting my kids diagnosed with autism and ADHD. And through that process, I learned that there's a lot of genetics involved and a lot of the traits um, applied to me as well. And so I went in and got my own diagnosis. And so at the beginning of my channel, it was all talking about like, oh my gosh, am I autistic also? This is like crazy to think about. Like I had no idea. And then going and getting a diagnosis and then um, the process of meeting with the psychologist and the testing and then like, oh my gosh, I was so excited when I did this video and I'm like, I am, I have autism. It was like so thrilling and it's, I'm still very glad to have the answers. I'm still happy and proud to be part of the autistic community. Um, but so it only been five months ago, October to November, November, December, December, January, January, February, February, March, March to April, six months, six months ago that I got my diagnosis. Wow. Uh, so half a year. Um, it's been a roller coaster of emotions from feeling like this is the answer to why my life has been so incredibly difficult. And that sense of understanding and validation to a complete, oh my God, this is why my life was so difficult. Why was I not I diagnosed earlier? To then grappling, well, even if I had been diagnosed earlier, it doesn't mean my life would have been easier because um, unless everything else had been different too, because early diagnosed women in the 90s, most of them had to go through ABA, which we now know is not good. So having an early diagnosis would have helped a lot of things, but it also could have been just as difficult. Um, so you can't, I mean, you just can't play the what if game, right? And then there's been times where I've had imposter syndrome, like when my system's regulated and I'm really happy and things don't feel that difficult or my accommodations and needs are being met. And it's like, oh, was the diagnosis wrong? And I have a video, you know, kind of talking early on about imposter syndrome and then hitting a full on meltdown and like all the autistic traits and just like, no, why did I even for a moment think that I wasn't autistic? And I think the, the biggest thing and for family members of late diagnosed autistic people too, because of being able to be high masking and present as neurotypical for so many of us. That's where the imposter syndrome comes in because we chameleoned our way into presenting neurotypical and it's like the autism was even hidden from ourselves. We didn't know. We always had a sense that something was off or different. One of my biggest struggles in life was always feeling like I didn't quite get it. Like what I mean is I would feel like I was doing the things that my peers were doing and not getting the same results. And I was like, what am I missing? What am I not doing right? That makes it so that other people can do X, Y, Z and get the results they want. But when I do X, Y, Z, I don't get those results. Like that has been an ongoing struggle. And 
that's part of the autism because I'm just mimicking the XYZ. You know, like I didn't get invited to a lot of friend groups. I thought I was socializing the same way that my peers were, but I'm autistic. I miss social cues. Even though I thought I was mimicking well, obviously they have huge gaps in my socialization that neurotypical people would sense or just, you know, not relate to. And so I got left out of a lot of things growing up. So, you know, the imposter syndrome, the, okay, no, definitely not imposter syndrome. I'm definitely autistic. Like it's been an emotional roller coaster. And then kind of realizing like things that I used to be really good at, I'm struggling with and talking about I'm feeling very alone in that and really confused because I didn't understand. Like, so autistic people, we really want to understand the whys and the hows and like why things are happening. And I've spent a lifetime having people gaslight my emotions and my feelings that I don't trust my own intuition about things. And so after this diagnosis, when all of a sudden things that I used to be able to do, have been very difficult. I, you know, even gaslit myself, like, am I making it up? Like, what the heck? Like, just getting a piece of paper that says I'm diagnosed autistic shouldn't change the fact that everything about me, like, I'm still the same person, but I'm not. That's the thing. And that was the key piece of information I was missing, I was masking before my diagnosis. And we've learned that the mask is very harmful. Um, it puts our brains into a constant state of fight or flight. It just wears you down and leads to burnout. After a diagnosis, and a lot of autistic people get a late diagnosis when they hit that burnout. All of a sudden, they're going along, they're masking, they hit a burnout where their body just shuts down and then that's when they seek medical help um, and often they'll get misdiagnosed as uh, depressed but sometimes that depression label just doesn't quite fit because it's not depression it's burnout and then if they keep exploring then that's when they realize that they're autistic but once we've reached burnout a lot of times there's some irreversible damage that has been done to um, I think it's our adrenal glands. I am not a medical professional. This is my lived experience. And I'm trying to like gather information that I've learned and pass it on. Um, but like, so, and I'm still learning. So as I learn stuff, I'm vlogging, right? There's not a lot of information out there on this. There's not after support. You get your diagnosis. Hi, you're autistic. Welcome to the community. There's no support. The therapists that are out there right now, there's therapists trained to help autistic children, but there's not any therapists really out there who are trained to help late diagnosed autistic women because this has all been happening in the last couple of years. The therapists that are working right now, when they went to school, they didn't cover, oh, what happens if a late diagnosed autistic woman comes into your um, building and, or your client, like wants to be your client. We didn't exist. <laughs> we existed. Just nobody knew about us. We weren't diagnosed yet. So I'm not saying that there aren't any, it's just very, it's hard to find. There's not very many therapists. We, a autistic late diagnosed AFAB women and even high masking men are the first generation that is dealing with this and we as a community are figuring out what's happening. So after that burnout, there is an autistic regression that often will happen. And I talked about it in this video up here and that was when I first kind of had the aha moment, like, oh my gosh, I am not crazy. This is what's happening to me. 
I am actually losing skills. It's not all in my mind. I'm not gaslighting myself. It's not that like, oh, I um, got a diagnosis and now I'm more autistic. That's not what happens. It's you got a diagnosis, you realize masking was harmful. You can't, once you, it's like knowing about the matrix. It's once you see the mask, it you can't unsee it. You can't go back to masking the way you ever did before. Some of it is trained responses. So the later you go before you get a diagnosis, like I was 42 when I got diagnosed, I've, a lot of it's muscle memory. Sometimes the mask is just muscle memory. Like even right now, my eyebrows want to go up when I'm talking because that's my, like part of my masked face is to be like alert and like, okay, that's really creepy looking thing. <laughs> Like if I was being masked, I would like be more alert and like da 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 da. <laughs> so that muscle of my eyebrows going up is a um, muscle memory. Um, it takes a lot of effort to maintain that facial expression. Like I would get like massive headaches if I am masked all day and I keep my eyebrows up. <laughs> It's such a little thing, but it's just like one of the tiny little bitty, tiny parts of being a masked autistic woman. And when you add that to all the other things that we were doing and the disassociation of sensory input that would happen, like tuning out again, dissociating loud noises. I can't believe how many times I've probably put my physical being in an unsafe situation by tuning out my environment. I used to hear reports and I still do you hear women talk all the time about how you always have to be aware of your environment and women on my mom's groups would talk about, Oh my gosh, you know, at target, I just couldn't believe this guy who kept staring at me and following me around or people talking about men following them in parking lots. And I always wondered like, that's never happened to me. Like, why are these women like it's like, so, like you hear there's so many women you talk to and they can tell you stories about at least you know several times in their life where they have been stalked or followed by a man and I thought that doesn't happen to me <laughs> then I realized as an autistic person I tune out my background all the time I don't pay attention to my surroundings because that's the only way I can function in busy crowded places like I so I'm sure it has happened to me and I've just been very incredibly lucky um anyway that's not what this video is about so since getting my diagnosis I have had good weeks good days good weeks and what I mean by that is where I feel not exhausted and I feel like I can accomplish tasks that I want to tech accomplish without feeling drained. And I've felt like an inner peace. But I've had many more days where I am just so exhausted. Feel like I can barely get anything done struggling to just keep a bare minimum of my tasks that I need to complete as an adult. I feel like I'm struggling to be a good wife and a good mom. And it's like I'm just processing a lifetime of trauma and that has been very hard for me to come to terms with because also as an autistic person, I had very black and white thinking about what trauma was. I thought trauma was an individual event that happened to somebody or like somebody who grew up in an abusive household. There was a person that traumatized you 
or that you lived through a war so you had trauma from that or that you maybe lived through um like hurricane katrina or a drastic earthquake and you might have had trauma from that i did not understand a definition of trauma of systematic societal i don't know the right word neglect i don't know towards an undiagnosed autistic person being constantly told to conform and to put ourselves in neurotypical boxes and change our identities to fit into a world that doesn't work how our brains are structured that i've spent a lifetime of making choices and decisions based on societal's expectations of me versus what was good for my personal needs and I love my life I'm very lucky I have a loving family supportive family I'm lucky I know a lot of autistic people who ended up in abusive relationships they go from job to job because they can't maintain a job. I've been a stay-at-home mom my whole life or my adult life. And that's another thing that I'm struggling with is that it's never productive to compare traumas and to minimize traumas. Like some people will compare trauma like, oh, I'm my life was more traumatic than you. I'm more deserving of support or whatever i'm not sure um for me is i i'm struggling with minimizing the tra trauma i had because on paper it doesn't sound like i've had a trauma trauma tra <laughs> that it sounds like i've had a traumatized life but you cannot compare people's trauma that's just what i'm currently working on in therapy and processing for myself and no matter what kind of trauma you've had in your life you have to go through this process of pro of dealing with it in order to move past it if you don't take the time to work through your traumas then you will more likely turn to coping mechanisms whether or not that is just sleeping, you know, shutting down your body. Some people turn to alcohol or other, you know, drugs. That has never been, drugs and alcohol or even sleeping, <laughs> never been. Like, I haven't, I don't know what my coping mechanism is. That's probably the next thing I need to talk about in therapy. It's like identifying what are my coping mechanisms because part of my autism was that I had to be perfect all the time which do you know that is so stressful <sighs> to never ever feel like you cannot be perfect and it wasn't that I wanted to be perfect it was that I had to be perfect I didn't have a gauge of it's it was all or nothing for me that was that's all I knew that's all I knew how to do I didn't understand it in between my other it was having to be perfect having to be a good little girl and always put other people's co uh, comfort above myself so that didn't really leave me much room for coping mechanisms <laughs> sometimes I'm just amazed I got as far as I did without having an even bigger burnout and I did have lots of little mini ones throughout my life but I never saw them because something in me always just pushed through pulled through forced it through to get the thing done and now it's like my body's come full stop and it's like nope you can't you can't do that anymore, Amanda. You can't push through until you heal. <laughs> until you heal your past and, and cope and deal. And that's what I am doing through trauma. And I just want to say I have had good weeks, but 
the last week or so has been a really, really hard one. Every day I've been really struggling to just get through the day. And I am trying to find moments to relax and to find peace. Okay, I'm gonna wrap up this video. Um, I did wanna talk about something else, but I'm gonna have to save that for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you are going through this too, you're not alone. You're not crazy. If you feel like you've lost skills or you've lost abilities that you could do before your diagnosis, you're not more autistic. You've always been autistic. You were just masking. You didn't know you were masking. You are worthy. You are valid. And I see you. Thank you. And I will see you again on the next video, I hope. Bye.